Sport, Laramie. Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. There's a good campsite ahead, Major. How far are we from Fort Laramie, Captain? About 25 miles, sir. That far? At least. 25 miles and about an hour of daylight. Guess we'll have to make camp. It's your patrol, Major. What do you think? I think we're pushing too hard. We've covered a lot of territory in the last couple of days. The men are tired. Telling on them. That's your campsite? Half a mile ahead? Yeah, that's it, sir. One more night of making camp. That doesn't bother you, does it, Captain? After six weeks of it, no, sir. One more night doesn't bother me. This is what I'm talking about, Lee. Listen to the men a while. Eating over there? That's Horner and Furnace. Doesn't matter who they are, just listen to them. You know what I do? No. We are gonna be out one more night, Horner. We were gonna be out one more night. Wouldn't be no concern of mine what you do, because I wouldn't be here. Oh, well. You'd be here. You have to find somebody else to draw to, Furnace. I just start walking. First woman I come to, red or white, I'd say, You go fetch a parson, woman. You got yourself a man. <laughs> Ain't Bessie going to be glad to hear that. You're not married a year. You're already talking about another woman. You know how much I've been with Bessie since we were married? Mm-hmm. Out six weeks this time, three months of time before, and before that it was... I don't even know. What good's having a wife you got to say how to do all over again three, four times a year? I never should have asked you no question. You don't want to hear me. You just want to hear you. You got something worth my hearing? I'm getting to know this soup bone awful well. If it was going to be out one more night, I'd carve my initials on it. And if it had come floating into my supper tomorrow night, I'd take it to that cook and That's I'd... all you got on your mind, soup bones? Well, I married Lizzie for a cooking. She's a powerful good cook. <laughs> when you get back to Fort Laramie, you're going to take one look at Lizzie and say, what's for dinner? I like a good meal. No, oh, man, like you don't deserve no wife. Well, Lizzie likes to cook. Got so I can't remember, can Bessie cook or can't she? But I got no trouble recollecting Bessie herself. Oh, I'm sure I'm going to admire seeing her again. Come on, Quince. I wonder what Lizzie's planning for supper tomorrow night. You still think we've been pushing them too hard, Captain? Uh, I still think they're tired. They're more homesick. That might be. I know, because I'm homesick too. Six weeks is a long time. It's a lot longer if you have someone waiting for you. A lot easier, too. Does that make sense, Lee? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Furnace feels it. And Horner. All the married men on the patrol. They all say it different ways, but what they feel is close to what I feel. Tomorrow night at this time, I'll be home with Mary. What about you, Lee? I... I'll be glad to get back, Major. Why? Well, <laughs> I like sleeping in a bed. I'm serious. It's lonely country, the West. I don't think I could stand it without Mary. I need her. I guess I'm saying I'm not really complete without her. Mary's a fine woman. You don't understand, do you, Lee? Horner, Furnace, or me? I can't understand what I don't know, Major, but sometimes I can get a feeling for it. I can see how it'd be... Pretty good to have someone waiting. Patrol! 
Attention. Dismiss. Lizzie. Hey, Lizzie, what you got for supper? Hey, classy, classy girl, is that you? Mary. What you got for supper? Captain Quince? Yes, Gord. Well, you ain't forgetting about tonight. Oh, what about tonight? Well, we talked some of a poker game. Oh, yeah, that's right, we did. Of course, who we get to play might be a problem. Can't count on any of the married men. No. No, we can't. I don't know how they put up with it, Captain. What's that, Gorse? Well, look at them. Women hanging on their necks, squealing, giggling. Some of them crying, even. If I come back to that after six weeks of campaign, I just might join some engine tribe. You'd sooner come home to a squealing, giggling squaw, would you? I'd sooner come home to nothing, just like I do. Yeah, that's the difference, then. What do you mean? Uh, look again, those men with the women on their necks. They don't look like they mind a bit. No, they sure don't. You, uh, you dead set on that poker gorse? Well, oh, we could slick up some, go into the village. That cooking at the hotel ain't too bad. And... Well, you ain't keen on any plan for tonight, are you, Captain? I guess I'm tired. Sure. Uh, gorse, uh, I... Uh, we can play poker any time, Captain. You know, that's the beauty of being single. We're free to do what we want any time. Yeah. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Well, I'll see you, sir. Sure, Gorse. you were expected back today. You look tired. Do you look fine. Do I? Just fine. Miss Willa, I... I... Yes, Lee? Oh, I guess you're busy. Well, just a little. Dad's in Cheyenne for a few days, but I'll be closing up in a little while. You want to take dinner with me? I'd like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like that, too. Well, I... I... You sure look fine, Miss Willa. Do I? Fine. About... Seven, Lee? Yeah, about seven. I'll be ready. Oh, Lee, I've got to get back to Mrs. Doolittle. Sure, sure, you do that. Uh, uh, Miss Willa. Yes, Lee? It's... It's sure good to be home. You don't look like the same man who came into the store this afternoon. <laughs> I'm bound to weigh less just shaving. Well, I think maybe beards are for presidents, like Mr. Lincoln and Mr. Grant, not for cavalry captains. Well, yeah, not for this one, anyway. Now, you might look very dashing with a mustache. That'd be a plain fraud, Willa, to look it and not be dashing. Mrs. Doolittle thought you looked dashing with a full beard today. Oh, uh -huh. I should have asked her to dinner, seeing she'd take me as I am. Everybody takes you as you are, Lee. Or not at all. Is that the way it is? That's the way it is. If this coffee's a sight better than I've been used to. <laughs> it's dreadful coffee. Uh huh? If I didn't think it'd scare you to death, I'd offer to make you some real coffee when you see me home. <laughs> coffee never scares me to death. But we have an unwritten rule about mentioning my homey little talents, like coffee making. Oh, you don't have to mention them. I hear about them. Mary Daggett's told me all about the light crusts on your berry pies. Liz Mead never fails to point out how you sew a fine seam and keep your father's house the tidiest and the post. Poor Lee. Oh, I don't suffer too much. I'm not sure you suffer enough. Well, maybe that's it. Pliny's in uh, Cheyenne, you say? I think he'll be back day after tomorrow. You tend in the store all alone, then? I haven't minded. It's filled the day. When I get too busy, I call for Liz Mead or one of the men around. A lot of folks will lend a hand if I need them. You reckon you you reckon you could get someone to take over tomorrow? You mean all, all day? To get where the hunting's good will take all day. Oh, I bet all my hunting equipment is packed. Packed? Oh, no. Yes, I uh, hadn't gone hunting for a while, so I just sort of stored it away in an old trunk with some old clothes, you know. 
Not that I can't get it out again without the least trouble. Ah, it doesn't sound like you, Willa. You go hunting, fishing, right regular. I know, but... Oh, well, none of this matters. Because if you're asking me to go hunting with you tomorrow, I accept. You let me worry about unpacking that old trunk. You still like hunting. Of course I do. Yeah. I thought maybe we'd ride up around Laramie Peak. It's kind of pretty up that way. It'd be good for you if you've been stuck in the store a lot lately. It'll be good. And I'll love it, Lee. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be nice. If you want to bring any of that coffee you're so handy with, why, uh, it's all right with me. you, Captain Quest? Ah. Seems to be, Mr. Seibert. You all right, sir? I feel fine, Lieutenant. Well, I don't believe I've ever heard you whistle before. Huh. Was I whistling? Well, it must have been you. Everyone else is asleep. Yeah. Maybe we'd better go into my room, Mr. Seibert. Wouldn't want to wake everyone in old bedlam. I'll just stay a moment. You, you understand, Captain, it's all right with me about the whistling. Oh. Ah. That's good. I probably wouldn't even have heard you, except it being so warm tonight, I left my door open. Yeah, I guess it is a warm night. Now, I didn't see it myself, so naturally I didn't believe it when all the other officers were talking about it at dinner. Lieutenant, you making any sense? Well, I'm not sure. Well, first night back after six weeks of campaign, a man's entitled to celebrate any way he likes. Yes, sir, I believe that. A little too much brandy after dinner, maybe? What? Me? No, sir, just one. Well, then... Why aren't you making any sense? No, I was talking about you, Captain. I didn't even have one brandy. Captain, the talk is that right after dismiss orders today, you walked off the parade ground straight to the sutler's store. Well? After that, you took a long bath and a shave, called for Miss Willa, and took her into the village for dinner at the hotel. What do we got here, officers on picket duty? Uh, do you mind, Captain? Is all this true? It's true, Mr. Seibertz. Also true is I'm pretty tired. Good night. And it was you whistling just now. You making out some kind of report? No, sir. I just want to be sure of the facts, that's all. They seem to be in order, Mr. Seibertz. Well, I don't believe it. I mean, I, I can hardly believe it, and I sure didn't believe it when it was told to me at dinner. You feel pretty bad about this? No, not bad. I was just sure that they were all wrong. So sure, I bet five dollars they were wrong. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You never did it before, did you? Right from the parade grounds to call on Miss Willa? I don't know. It's not like you. I don't know what that means. Well, I told you it's late. I'm tired, Mr. Savage. Well, I can't help asking, Captain. Does all this uh, mean something? Well, uh, all right. Yes, it does mean one thing. Yes, sir? You lost $5. Good night, Mr. Savage. Did you see that, Lee? Yeah, beautiful shot, Willa. Now, what am I going to do with an adult? Ah, you could roast it. <laughs> and feed all of Fort Laramie. <laughs> Ought to be right through here. Uh, pronghorn antelope, will it? And a beauty. Mm -hmm. Now all you gotta do is figure out how to get him back to the post. Well, it's all been so pleasant today, I just supposed I had a gentleman with me. <laughs> you got a hunter. There's a difference. I know. A fisherman cleans his own fish. A hunter takes care of his own game. When you take up rod and rifle, you're not a man or a woman. You're a fisherman or a hunter. Uh, you shouldn't complain, Willow. You're good at both of them. You uh, want to rest a while? You won't hold it against me as being too feminine or anything like that. There's a stream over there. Some nice, soft boulders to stretch out on. I'd think you'd be tired, Lee, six weeks out in the country like this. I don't get tired of country like this. 
Don't get tired of rifles, sidearms. Oh, that's a difference. Hunting people, hunting game. Well, which boulder looks best to you? <laughs> this one's fine. You uh, want some water? No, thanks. Uh. <sighs> hey, look, Willa. Trout in that stream. Mm-hmm. And the poles are back with the horses. And here's one fisherman who's not going back for them. Oh, I'm satisfied they're just there, in the stream. Hey, this is quite a spot to just come on to without planning. It's beautiful. Food, water, sun, shade. There's caves back into the canyon along the stream. You know, a man could live right here and never want for a thing. A man could, I guess. Sure he could. What does he need that isn't here? I won't say it. I like it here just, just fine. You would, too. Until one day a cavalry troop would ride nearby, or you'd hear someone sound taps from a camp at night. Oh, you'd come running out of your cave, all right. Mm, maybe. You know you would. I can't imagine you away from the army. I haven't been for a long, long time. <laughs> Sometimes, like like now, I, I think I wouldn't mind leaving. To do what? I'd live like this. Hunting, fishing, making trails, seeing where they lead. Stopping where I want, starting when I want. You would, wouldn't you? You'd live like this, and like it just fine. You wouldn't be lonely or need anything, or anybody. I... I don't plan that You far. make me sick. Do I? Well, yes, sometimes you do. And sometimes you don't. And that makes me sick. Hey, hey what's the matter, Willa? I thought we were having a good day. We were. We are. I'm sorry, Lee. I don't want to spoil anything. Today, especially. I don't either. Well, then, help a fellow hunter with her antelope, will you? Sure, Willa. Sure. It's right here, Gorris, on the left forefoot. Sure is. She's telling us all about it, ain't she? The shoe's loose. Yeah, but the real hurt's under the shoe. Something's worked its way under there, pebble maybe. That's why she's pulled up lame. Mm-hmm. Well, between the smithy and the men, they'll get her fixed up fine. Furnace. Yes, Sergeant? You see this mare gets to the blacksmith. Left forefoot, the shoe's loose. I'll tell him, Sergeant. Come on. Mind she gets good care. That's Miss Willis' mare. I will. She sure sets it real pretty, too, Captain. Yeah, yeah, she does. You suppose she'll get rid of her now? You don't get rid of a mare because she pulls up lame. Well, I didn't mean that. I meant seeing she won't be here. And Pliny's not a hand to ride. Not that he could handle seeing it. Seeing who won't be here? Well, Miss Willis. Now, why won't she be here? Well, if she moves to San Francisco, she won't be here. You act like I'm telling you something you ain't heard tell of. You are. But you've been with her clean since we got back, yesterday all day out hunting. Well, don't look at me like that. I'm just telling you what Mrs. Mead told me. Uh, it's all right, Gorse. The way I understand, that's what Pliny's doing in Cheyenne, getting her set up on the train. Oh, you mean you was out there all day yesterday and she didn't mention this to you? Didn't you talk none? Yeah. I talked about living in a cave.
Lee, I've been worried. I, I... It, it's only me, ma'am. I come to tell you I can't find him anywhere. I wonder where he went. Oh, please come in, Sergeant Gorse. Thank you kindly, ma'am, but I ain't had my supper yet. Neither is the captain. At least why he's not at Old Bedlam. I talked to Lieutenant Seibert's over there. He says none of the officers have seen him since morning. You must be the last one to see him then, at the stables. No, ma'am. Furness said he'd come back later and rode off. He didn't say nothing, just rode off. About noon, that was. Funny. I started to say it's not likely, but it's just like him, isn't it, Sergeant? Riding off alone without a word to anyone. Oh, it ain't that he can't take care of himself, Miss Willa. No. It's not that. Well, please go have your supper. Thanks for your trouble. No trouble, ma'am. And, and don't you fret now, you hear? I won't. Good night, Sergeant. Evening, guys. You in one piece, Captain Quince? Yeah, I, uh, I think so. I've been looking for you most of the afternoon. I missed my supper poking around hunting for you. I missed mine, too. I was thinking. Yeah. I was. I believe you. I'm sorry about your supper. No matter about that. I just missed food. Miss Willa now, she missed you. Sure, you want to talk out here, Lee? Yeah. What, what I got to say. Uh, well, it'll come easier without these lamps on. Uh, you can, um, you, you you can sit if you like. Thank you. You, Lee? No, I'm going to stand. You know, I tried to tell you myself. Last night when we got back from hunting, I couldn't believe I hadn't told you. But I kept thinking there'd be a time that it seemed more right. And it just didn't come. I put together some things today, like at dinner the other night, about things being packed away. And yesterday, before we left Laramie Peak, something about you not wanting to spoil things. That part's all right, Willa. I hope so. Willa, uh, what's in San Francisco? For me, a lot of things that aren't here. It's a life I don't know chance. A lot of chances I don't have here. Mostly, I guess it's everything that Fort Laramie isn't. You tired of Fort Laramie? I'm tired of me at Fort Laramie. You? Me. Well, I... I, I want you to know I, I liked yesterday. I, I've been giving it a lot of thought today. I... I liked yesterday. I liked taking dinner with you the night I got back. I liked knowing you'd be here. I liked all that, too. But Lee... No, no, you, you, you better let me talk while the words are coming. Today, I, I was going over it all. It seemed to me that... Well, it uh, seemed to me there are a lot of things we like the same way, and... Lee, don't. Don't say any more. Well, it, it's not coming easy. I'm not saying it well... Uh, what I'm trying to say I is... I know what you're trying to say. And I don't want you to say it. You don't? Are you asking me to marry you, Lee? I'm coming real close to No. That. Don't come close. Don't... Don't say it. All right. How long, I wonder, I've wanted you to say it. I think I've prayed you'd ask me. Like all those times I prayed you'd come near me, and you didn't. I've waited and wanted so long, Lee. I'm not pretending to understand. You said it yesterday. You liked stopping where you want, starting where you want. You like me when and where you want, too. And you'll miss me when I go. But you don't love me. The way to a marriage. You know you don't. 
You're saying no, Willa. We're both saying no. Lee, if you hadn't heard I was going away, would you have come here to ask me? Well, I... I... I don't know. I know. Not tonight. Or next week. Or next year. I'll miss you. I'll miss you. I think I'll always miss you. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll say good night now. Goodbye, Lee. <laughs> Bye, Willa. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Tom Hanley. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Parley Bear, Dolores Pennard, and John Daner. Jack Moyles is Major Daggett, and Harry Bartell is Lieutenant Seibertz. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. You'd fight for your right to vote. Any American would. But are you prepared to register to vote? In many states, voters must be registered if their political choices are to be counted. Make sure your vote will be counted. Find out where and when you may register to vote in your state. Give democracy a chance to work for you. This has been a public service message from CBS Radio. CBS Radio.